It's always very difficult to track down exactly where the ideas for a story come from. And often with my books, I get the basic idea very early on. I don't, I don't know the rest of it. And I, I, I know I had the idea for uh, a galactic empire run by, by princes, and the princes were augmented to be superhuman. They were in, in all ways superior to the people that they ruled, or at least so they thought. Um, they're certainly physically and in some respects mentally superior because they've been made that way, uh, but they're not ethically superior uh, amongst other considerations. So I had that, that core idea, but I didn't actually know what the story was. I, I knew I wanted to have this, this young prince, someone who's been made to be a prince, who, who then is, is thrust out into the Galactic Empire that he thinks he's just going to run and be one of the rulers of. And of course, it's not as simple as that. But it took me a while to work out, work out what the story was, that it wasn't just the story of uh, you know, a, a superhuman prince ruling in this galactic empire. I had to find a story, and the story I eventually did find uh, is, is more complicated than that. It's about what it means to be superhuman. I guess once I had that, that, that superhuman prince, and I guess we all think about what it would be like to be faster and stronger and and uh, you know, essentially uh, invulnerable, and, and in, in this case, kind of immortal as well, because the princes are reborn if they're killed most of the time, not always. And I guess that's the way with all my books. They start with small ideas and they grow. And I spend a long time thinking about stories before I even write the first paragraph often. Often I'll spend a year or more thinking about a story, making notes, trying to work out you know, what the story is that I want to tell. And but then I start writing it, and then of course it changes in the writing. So I can't pick any one thing that, that sparked off this story, except that I wanted to write a science fiction adventure story. I love, you know, all my books are adventure stories of one kind or another. Most of them are fantasy, of course, not science fiction. Uh, so it makes an interesting change for me. And the other thing with this book is that it's written in the first person. It's actually written in the main character, Prince Kemri, in his voice. And I wanted to do that as well, but I don't know why. Perhaps it was just time for a, uh, a different sort of challenge to write a, a different sort of book. I hope that answers the question. <coughs> the Naknucks. It's a, it's a good word. I like that. Um, the the Naknuck Bitech Rebels. Uh, there's three technologies in the book that are very important. The, the galactic empire that, that Prince Kemri is a, a prince within uh, rules by the use of three technologies. Psytech, which is essentially psionic technologies, you know, telepathy and so on. Mechtech, which is dealing with pretty much a classical technology of, of engines and, uh, and uh, electronics and so on. And Biotech, which is biological technology where things are grown and you have, for example, living ships that have been grown from, uh, you know, from uh, uh, by uh, biological, uh, for biological purposes, and they're and they're merged together. Of course, um, this isn't a particularly new idea. I mean, uh, as in lots of science fiction uh, and in lots of books in general, I'm 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 standing on the shoulders of giants, uh, or I'm a little twig on the family tree further down. So all all these sorts of things have been explored by sometimes many authors before. Uh, so you could look back at, at numerous influences on this book. Uh, the ideas, it's not where, the ideas can be reused and they are reused by many different authors. It's what you do with the ideas and how you make them into a story that is, is new, uh, you know, for myself as an author, but also for the reader. So a lot of those, those concepts are, are ones that have been seen many times before in science fiction. I hope that I've used them in new and interesting ways and, and of course to me they're not as important as the story, as the adventure. Uh, you know, they're part of the mix but they're not the most, they're not the most important part. Um, as, as for the names, uh, I think with all my books I like the names need to work for me. I, I tend to read names aloud or I say names aloud and whether the names are within a fantasy novel where they have to, they need a certain sort of mythic resonance, they need to feel as if they belong in a fantasy novel, 
and, and not in a stupid way uh, where you can't pronounce them. I also feel like in a science fiction novel they need to to be evocative of, of that sort of setting. So I spend quite a lot of time with the names kicking around different different syllables and trying to make them work and, and combining different elements of language together to, to get what I think sounds right. Space, I mean, space opera is another word for an adventure story set in space, set in, set in, uh, in a science fictional universe. To be a space opera, I guess it really it has to have spaceships, it has to have space battles, it has to have all that sort of fun stuff you associate with you know, the first five minutes of Star Wars. It's a sort of classic space opera time, you know, the big, the big cruiser hunting down the small ship and the, you know, the, the beam weapons firing across space and the planets in the background and so on. Um, I'm certainly very attracted to that. I wanted to write that sort of story. Uh, again, I think this harkens back to the fact that I always write adventure stories. I like, I love adventure stories, and whether they're set, you know, historically or in, in fantasy or in you know con the contemporary world as thrillers, or they're set in science fictional worlds, they they all attract. I like to read them. I like to write them, and. I guess I, I, felt, I felt this one just came along at the right time. I've been writing fantasy for a long time. Uh, I've been writing uh, particularly children's fantasy, writing the keys to the kingdom for a long time. And uh, this, was a, this was an interesting change. So uh, I, I enjoyed the, uh, the, uh, the variation on a theme. It's still an adventure story, but with a, a different set of, uh, of backgrounds and, and, and some different traditions and, and tropes that I've played with to to create a story, but I hope, as well as being an adventure story, there's more to it as well. I, you know, my favourite adventure stories always have something more to them than just the, the top level of, of the adventure and the space battles and so on. And I hope con a confusion of princes, as well as being fun, to, you know, it's fun to read, you're caught up in the adventure and the excitement, I hope that you also, you know, readers will take away more from it as well. There, is, there are other layers of meaning as well. My, my writing process for A Confusion of Princes, uh, pretty, I mean, pretty much the same as my writing process for all, all my other books, which is to be, I think about them for a long time, as I mentioned before. I probably spend a year or more planning a book. Actually, with Confusion of Princes, it was probably more like three years spent thinking about this book. And part of that time was actually taken up in working on the, <coughs> the mammoth, pardon me, the massively multiplayer online game Imperial Galaxy, which shares a background with the Confusion of Princes. I'd started working on a Confusion of Princes before we started working on Imperial Galaxy. So I took a lot of the background from a Confusion of Princes and used it for Imperial Galaxy. But then I wasn't working on the book, I was working on the game. So there's quite a long period where a Confusion of Princes was kind of on hold and I was still thinking about it. But I was still working on the background and, and, and the execution of that for Imperial Galaxy. So it had time to grow in my mind, all, all that background. So unusually, this book, I guess, had longer being thought about than even my other books, some of which have, I've spent several years thinking about. Once I, I moved on from that, though, and started actually writing the book, pretty much the same process where uh, I never tell myself I'm sitting down to write a book because that can be quite daunting. You, you sit down and you think, oh, I've got to write a 100,000 word book. That's quite a lot of words. It can be a little bit, uh, a little bit scary. What I always tell myself, I just have to write a chapter. So I plan out, I plan that chapter and I start writing it and I write the chapter and it might take a day or two days or it might take two weeks or, or longer even. And then I finish the chapter and I write the next one. and. That way I'm, I'm never thinking, there's all, these, there's all these words to write ahead of me. All I have to do is write a two to three thousand word chapter. I know what's happening in that chapter, or at least I think I know what's happening in that chapter. Sometimes I'm surprised part of the way through. And then I write it and I write the next one and then you know, a year later or, or a year and a half later, all of a sudden there's not, there are no more chapters to write and you finish the book. 
so that's that's my particular sort of technique of overcoming the fear of writing an entire book. You'd think that you know after 20 or more books, I wouldn't have to do that anymore, but uh, I still do, do seem to need to kid myself. I'm only writing a chapter, and these days I write. I writing is my my full time job. Uh, I'm very fortunate that I, I have a separate office I, I walk to, and I probably spend between sort of two and three hours a day actually writing. Not always the same thing. I'm, I might be writing a, the current novel, writing some short fiction. I'll be revising work, and the rest of the time, you know, is spent doing promotional things like this video, for example, you know, doing interviews, answering Q and A's. Uh, there's all kinds of stuff wrapped up around being a writer these days, as well as just writing books. There's lots of other stuff you have to do to help the books reach an audience. Uh, so I spend two or three hours a day actually writing in office hours, essentially, and uh, writing a chapter at a time. And little by little, I end up writing a book. But early on, I, I should mention, uh, early on, I had quite the reverse. I wrote probably my first 10 books just at night time and on weekends while I had very busy day jobs. So you don't need to be a full-time writer to, uh, to write books. It's, not, it's, it's, it's a luxury. It's, uh, I'm, I'm very glad to be able to do it that way, but it's not necessary. So if you're writing a book, you can do it part-time. You can do it as well as doing anything else. I'm always working on a new book. Um, I, I'm always working on possibly several new books um, and, and stories. I'm always writing, I'm always writing something. Uh, quite often not the thing I'm supposed to be writing, uh, but actually at the moment I am working on a new book. I'm working on another book set in the Old Kingdom, uh, set in the world of Sabriel and Lirael, uh, except for it takes place several hundred years earlier than Sabriel. Uh, it's called Clariel and it tells the story of the necromancer in who appears in Lirael, Claw of the Mask. It's actually her story, it's about her as a young woman, and it's about how someone can become what she becomes later on. So I'm working on that at the moment, it's been, and I'm enjoying being back in the Old Kingdom. I've, you know, I've, had, my, I've had my science fiction adventure with the confusion of, a confusion of princes, and now I'm, now I'm back in the back in fantasy again with, uh, with Clariel. So I'm, and I'm, I'm enjoying working on that. And, that. and that hopefully will be out in 2013.